Hello and welcome to our first ever mini episode podcast, whatever you want to call it, of Glaswegian Geeks. I know, and I bet you're all thrilled because this will not be an hour. I know, this will be like five minutes editing, James, trust me. I I, I am totally okay with that. Yeah. Um, uh, as a part of our first inaugural mini episode what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be spicing up the podcast we're going to be doing longer episodes of movie reviews and the like and many ones of maybe animation movies or animation episodes Char- well, character like biography char- yes things yes like that. Uh, and for this subject today we're hoping once a month uh, to give you comic of the month yes a comic or book of the, month. of the month well what we'll do is to keep things current and a little bit of nostalgia throwback kind of stuff what we're going to do is each month we're going to pick between ourselves and I don't know how this is going to be possible every month because we're going to be bitching all the time like no my comic deserves to be better but it's not <laughs> yes but we managed to nail it down well kind of uh, for this one so we're going to be doing a current comic from March obviously this will be out in April so we're reviewing our best comic that was out in March and as a kind of throwaway as I said we'll be reviewing a older graphic novel as a kind of like a way to like tie it in so that if you're not reading current stuff then you can still listen to the older stuff yes because we we we, we want you to listen to this you know this this will never go out of date you know never 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 go out never. Of date. never never especially when they're involving me anyway <laughs> so uh mario would you like to tell us what your secret comic of the month is or comic issues of the month are because you never told me yes i didn't and there was a reason because i wanted i tried to nail it down to one right i really tried but uh, with this title being out fortnightly, it's a kind of a cheat because both were out last month and both were absolutely fucking dynamite. And it is Batman issue 18 and 19 because I'm a filthy cheating whore and I can move the goalposts whenever I fucking want. Yeah, you can you can do whatever the fuck you like, man. And do you want to give us a little breakdown then of, you know, what these are? Yes, this is parts two and three of the I Am Bane story arc. Are in you? Oh, sorry, part three and part four, yes. Oh, you missed my joke, mate. Uh, he I says, I am Bane, and I says, are you? And I expect to never mind. No, no. My humour is wasted oh, oh. on you. <laughs> I know, why Why'd you even have me here? <laughs> oh, just, just character building. <laughs> Yeah, so issue 18, absolutely gut-wrenching. Seeing the stories of Bane and Bruce Wayne go side by side, hand in hand, basically. Bane's led a shitter life than Bruce. He's been very pampered and stuff, and Bane's had to actually kind of survive to live, whereas Bruce has just been dilly-dallying along for a good little part of his life. And uh, the artwork is by Danny Mickey, and written by Tom King, who I was a little bit apprehensive getting the Batman titles from Rebirth because I loved Scott Snyder's stuff but actually this is really well done mate the art is absolutely beautiful like there's nothing I can fault with it right away seeing present day fight happen then you're showing flashbacks of Bruce Wayne and Bane side by side basically they've lived mirror lives one good one bad well, both bad, but one's got a good bad and a bad bad, if you get me. Yeah, I mean, I get the impression from, like, you know, like, what I'd kind of had a look at, that Bruce Wayne obviously does have a tragic life in terms of, you know, parents dying and stuff like that, but he had money, he had support, he had people helping him. You know, he had that support that he had helped him become Batman. He got a lease on life, and that was where he wanted to take it. Whereas Bane was very much, um, you know, he was in prison for most of his yeah. life and impoverished, and, you know, he never had half the stuff or any of the stuff that Bruce Wayne had nor did he have support Th- I think this book's from what you've kind of described to me, really makes you feel that Bane isn't actually in the wrong. Yeah, like he's, yeah, yeah, he has killed people many times over and stuff, but, you know, maybe if he led the life of Bruce Wayne, maybe he could have been Batman. It's an interesting concept. So, tell us about Bane. How did Bane get to you? Well, the Iron Bane story arc, Batman stole Psycho, Psycho Pirate from his little island in possession, almost. That's the way that Bane looks upon him. And Bane was actually free from everything, the pain, and he was actually off Venom. Like, there's a pretty weird scene where uh, Bane's fighting in the Scud. You obviously don't see anything, James. But, uh, yeah, he's, like, fighting in the Scud with Batman, and you're just like, oh. Like, he's, he's, he's almost more impressive physically 
physically looking than he is when he's on the Venom, and you're like, well, oh, that's coming from a straight man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, imagine what I would be saying about that. <laughs> Just wait till you read it. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> yeah, so this is Bane coming to take Psycho Pirate back. And it, in the start of the story arc, I am Bane, he's tied up all the Robins and tied them in the back cave just with I am Bane written on them. So in this present day fight, Batman's getting his cunt kicked in, let's be honest. But there's a little bit of a distraction that allows him to slip away. Then we see Catwoman with the three allies of Bane. The foul, what are their names? The ones that are Nightfall and stuff. Just oh, they're like the... They're just his mercenaries. Yeah, they're like, like his, his, his lieutenants. He's got the th- uh, she's got the three of them with I am Cat written on them as I kind of like fuck you like for doing this to the Robins and stuff and doing it to my Bruce. Fuck you, my Bruce. Aye, my boy, my boy, the man who sleeps with me. <laughs> uh, yeah, so that ties up that, and then Bane is forced to enter Arkham Asylum, which is fucking impressive. Actually, actually read this one. Um, yeah, this is issue 19. Because um, the front cover itself blew me away. You know, you've got every, s- near enough, every near enough the entire rogue gallery. Well, all the, the credible rogue, ones. The credible A-listers of the rogues gallery. And this is... Um, it's fucking brutal. This is literally a book about being going through Arkham Asylum and beating the shit out of everyone. Everyone of that villains. stands in his way. Because that's what we get from Harvey Dent. We get the backstory of why all the villains have been let loose. Because, well, Batman's given us this. If we stop you or what you're going to offer us in return. Pain. That's Pain the offers one. pain. And this line was... I had a newfound love for Bane. I I've always seen Bane as the he broke one dimensional. Spine. He's one dimensional. Nothing to. This is a Bane who was reformed and he enjoyed that. He led a normal life to a degree. Yes. And when that was taken from him, he's he gone wants fucking tits. Tonto. Like, he wasn't in pa- like you say. He wasn't in pain. He wasn't on venom. He you know he was. It was humanized. You know he was he was back to earth almost. Yeah, he was. He there was a bit of salvation for him from the pain yeah. and from the things that he'd faced, and he thought maybe that was it. You know, yeah, okay, he treated Psycho Pirate like a bit of a possession, but that was because he was so scared to lose that. This was just beautiful because he walks in and Harvey Dent's there and saying, "Oh well, Batman's promised to make our living conditions better if we go against you," and then the dark side of uh, Harvey Dent says, "But I want to cleave up Batman. So if we were to work with you, what would you offer us?" And Bane just looks at him and is like, "Pain." I offer pain and punch his fuck at him. He's not making deals. No. He's not making... He doesn't... But that is in a kind of way where he think, where I think Bane is better than Batman. He doesn't need that. He doesn't need to make deals. He'll do it himself because he can. Yeah. And that was that was the bit that kind of made me really kind of fall in love with Bane in that sense because he was just like, do you think I need you? D- do you yeah. really think that I'm going to make an arrangement with you? Like, I really don't need you. Like, And then he just mows through like Two-Face and then everybody... <laughs> <laughs> After he punched fuck out of Two Face, everybody else I was shitting myself for because <laughs> I was just like, oh no. Uh, even Solomon Grundy and Amigdala. Like, seriously, now they, like. Now, physically, they could probably, together, put up a fight with Bane, but they don't want to because they're fucking shitting themselves. You know, um, Bane wants nothing to do with these people. And then after. Solomon Grundy and Agamadala. Scarecrow. Now, this is one of my favourites because Scarecrow is rhyming off different fears. Yes, and basically what everything. You can see that he's actually fucking shit scared. He's shaking. He you doesn't see, know what to do. You see Bane trying to punch through a giant metal door and he's doing it and Crane is shitting himself. He is like, oh no, this isn't good. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his fear toxin. And it does fuck all. And it no, actually... Well, it builds up that it does. And then, you know, again, another amazing line. Crane sitting there going, oh, tell me about, tell me about your nightmares. Tell me this. And he's like, I don't get nightmares. I give nightmares. And he, you don't see what he does to Crane, but <laughs> it, it just shows you like a clip outside of Arkham. Arkham lightning. Lightning strike. We, we <laughs> the, 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 the typical horror sight <laughs> of Arkham. Oh, visit Gotham and the... Arkham Asylum! And, ah! and I don't know, Crane might as well be dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I think maybe his fear uh, gas has been shoved somewhere. I think he <laughs> may as well be dead, to be honest. Whatever Bane's done to him, I don't want it. The next issue, we'll see Scarecrow in a wheelchair. <laughs> like, I'm telling you. 
Like, he's fucked. Like, even uh, characters like Mr. Freeze, who's actually frozen him solid, cannot stop him. Like, Bane is just this immovable force. He, he's basically a juggernaut in this, you know? He's he's a bit like John Wick. Yeah, you've seen the John Wick films. Yeah. They, everybody's scared of John Wick because everybody says John Wick is a man of focus. He is a man of sheer will. And if he wants to kill you, he will kill you. And yeah. he will come for you. And you can't stop it. That's what Bane is in this. Nothing is going to stop him from doing what he wants. And he wants his psycho pirate back. Yes. And that is it. Like <laughs> Nothing it will stop him. And that is... He's, yeah. a, he's a man on a mission, and that's normally something you don't see with him. Usually, he's always been a big intimidating force to be reckoned with, but in this, he's... He's, he's a reason. conqueror. He You've, he's got the, like, kind of the credibility now to back up his menacing, like, character and stuff. Yeah, And absolutely. one of the best parts in it is James that that's just beautiful art right there it's it's, it's it's six panels on one page and it's literally counting down the time and you know it's I'll give you an idea of what Bane did on his night out in Arkham <laughs> right uh, at 1.02pm <laughs> Bane proceeded on a fight with Man Bat and kicked fuck out of Man Bat Mario what happened and who did he face at 2.43 Victor's ass Victor, and he Victor's probably got that knife shoved right up his <laughs> sphincter. Let's let's just. Why would you send Victor's ass? <laughs> He's well, like. Well, we might be able to cut one of the hoses of the venom. You never know. You never well, know. Zaz will pretty much be dead. And I think at 4:28 p.m. he engaged in a squabble with someone much worse than Zaz, Mad Hatter. Yes, he had a little tea party at 4:28 because clearly. This is hours of exhaustion, James. I'm just saying, cake's not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> and at uh, 5.54 p.m., uh, Dr. Phosphorus decided to have a little argument with him. And, yes, Dr. Phosphorus, you know, <laughs> was pretty much cremated by that <laughs> point. <laughs> Uh, oh, and at um, eight eleven p.m. Oh, it's been a long day. Oh. seven hours in. Hard graft. Um, hard graft. A kicking ass. Uh, he fights Hush. Oh, and literally shoves his boot in Hush's face. Yeah, and then at ten thirty nine p.m. Because you know this guy's nonstop. Uh, he went up against Copperhead and won. This. I, I think. That's a good day for someone, you know. I, I think, think Batman's got villain envy right there. Like oh, he's going, if I had enough coffee and energy, I'd, I could maybe do this, you know? But there's something here, right? There's something really interesting there because Bane isn't killing anyone. Yeah, he's, he's just doing, doing Batman's the Batman's job better <laughs> than Batman. Like, he is intimidating. And then the confrontation with uh, Calendar Man, which, you know, Calendar Man's just like, nope, no having this. <laughs> Calendar Man's <laughs> just standing there, like, and he's kind of having his wee rhymes and stuff. And Bane has just had enough. And literally, you don't see him hit Calendar Man, but you see one panel of Calendar Man standing, and then the next one, he's on the floor. <laughs> yeah, he's just, like, putting himself out, just like, nope, I'm done. And uh, James, one of your favourites? The Riddler. Finally. One, like, Eddie. Well, we've, we've had a lot of major villains go, uh, been run through by Bane here, and but this is possibly the biggest one. But, you one. know, one, one villain you want to see get his cunt kicked in is Riddler. You will be disappointed. <laughs> like, um... Riddler ends up helping Bane and then mentions to Bane, be sure to let Batman know that I still remember our war of jokes and riddles. This seems to me like a name drop because a new, t- a yes. new series has been announced called... A mini-series. A mini-series called The War of Jokes and Riddles. Yes, also written which, by Tom King. Which seems to be pitting Joker and the Riddler against each other. Yes. All I'm saying is, Nygma's got balls if he's <laughs> going against Joker. And you're going to be rubbing those issues all over yourself, oh aren't yes. you? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Your two boys fighting. Who's your favourite child, James? Oh, Joker. Oh, Easily. oh. Easily. Because jo- I can have fun with Joker. Like, it's just annoying. But this is the thing. That name drop is obviously very important. Yes. They want you to read that and go, oh. Oh, hold on. That title f- right there. I need to know what happens. We're going to find out what's happened there. Because that, to me, implies that Riddler wants Batman dead. He's sending Bane after him because he can. Yeah, maybe Batman done something that cost Enigma. Yeah. Absolutely. In the war of jokes and riddles, and he's like, "Ah, oh, well, this is this is my justice for you." Hi, <laughs> fight Bane, mate. <laughs> and um, but this is the thing: you see a kind of calm, collective riddler. Like Bane's like, "I'll snap you in two if you don't open this door in thirty seconds." It's like, <laughs> date in eleven. <laughs> it's like, it's like Riddler is the only one who casually just is not scared of Bane, actively not frightened of him, which is new for Riddler, yeah. which I like. If that's the Riddler that you're getting in the war of jokes and riddles, I'm I'm in. 
Good, good, good. I'm in. And finally, at 12 a.m., it's the main event, Batman it's against Bane, which ends the fu- issue. I, um, um, it's, we're, we're not getting any punches thrown or anything, which will be issue 20, which is All shaping I'm up to be a beautiful Bane story, something that you actually kind of feel sorry for him that maybe connects to the character. All I'm saying is um, Bane and Nightfall broke Batman's back. Bane has always been a physical threat and tested Batman physically. Now, this book, I'm kind of sitting there like, so Batman has taken something from him that yes. made him a better person, or at least no. he thought, <laughs> to a degree. Yes. It made his life easier, which Bane didn't but have. But this is the thing, Batman needed Psycho Pirate to help Gotham Girl get her mind back, who is in the first story arc of uh, Tom King's Batman yeah, run absolutely. through Rebirth. So, so it, it's a long build. It's if you want to know what happens, it's twenty issues build up. So it's it's a long it's a long read. But hey, it's been good so far. It's been building up very nicely over the story arcs. Yeah. So I've got no problem. I think being in this is one to watch. I think all the characters in this are really one to watch. I think this is um this is really kind of a fresh team of writers and yeah artists. They've name dropped the War of Jokes and Riddles, which is a big series, which has been announced. So they've name dropped that because they want people to go, oh wait, right, so this is happening. So to me, they're really trying to tie all their stuff in, which is great. So yeah, what, what were your overall thoughts of the two books? Fantastic. Uh, I'd s- yeah, we'll rate them. We'll rate them. That's our thing. We rate things because we're pricks and we need to put our stamp of approval. Like, uh, I would say it's a Batman story. Issue 18, it's more of a read than an action comic, this one. So I would definitely say a 9 out of 10. And then follow on with 19, a 9 out of 10. The artwork is absolutely beautiful. Danny Mickey gets a proper chance, maybe more so than others, to draw all these different villains. Maybe a bit of word in saying, oh, I want this villain, I want this one. Oh, I would love to draw Bane going up against this one and that one. And hell, they, they look fucking dynamite, man. Yeah, I think there's definitely a lot of good to be happening there. So, I'd, I mean, I'd... I'd the two I've read, I'll rate them together. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing ten. Oh, I'm perfect 10. ten. I like stories that give me villainage, serious villainage. And Bane is a villain who, who does, who is quite complex to a degree, but not quite to this level. Like he is fighting for something. Name a book where you've seen somebody go through Batman's Rogues Gallery and cut them down in like less than twelve hours. Like I'm having a wee think here. I can't I can't think of anyone. You've seen Batman do it in Serious House? Well, seen it done in uh, Nightfall, which takes place over like many days, like from Bane breaking them out to them to Batman going through them, but that's uh, over a period of time. I mean this is this This is is non stop. This is this is Bane from the start of the day to the end of the day and he is not stopping. Like a full twenty four hours going mental. Because it's nice to see Bane hu- with this purpose. He might not be a nice man, but there's a purpose to what he's doing. And maybe Psycho Pirate was going to help him not want, not have this... Because Bane has a lust for yeah. killing. A lust for, you know, fighting and stuff like that. Maybe, you know, Psycho Pirate was going to help him. You know, maybe he was going to stop that. Maybe Bane was going to try and retract from that stuff and X, Y, Z. I mean, Bane lives in constant pain. You know, that's his problem. And that's his salvation. So whether Batman took Psycho Pirate to help someone else is irrelevant. Bane feels like, why is she more important than me? Like, do you know what I yeah. mean? This is what I love about it. So I, I, I think I, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely going to catch up on the first part and read the good, last part. Good man, good man. Uh, that, that's definitely caught my eye. The graphic novel for this month yes. is an old one. And it's, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to recommend I Hate Fairyland. Oh. I Hate Fairyland is... Um, <coughs> madness imagine imagine you're a little girl because I do that every other day and you magically end up in a place called fairyland yes are you imagining it I'm picturing it now follow the sound of my voice you walk through a glistening fairyland and it's beautiful and it's charming and it's lovely but you fucking hate it so you pick up the nearest battle axe and you decide to kill everything in fairyland <laughs> and it's non-stop blood gore destruction of this beautiful, beautiful place and you just don't want it to stop. You just want to keep stopping it while you stand in the midst of all this gold that you have caused. Now, if that doesn't sell it to you, I don't know what will. <laughs> it's a book that's really... I looked it out earlier on today and I 
was reminded of so many beautiful things about it. Uh, what's a creative team on it? So I Hate Fairyland is done by Scotty Young. Yes. And on the front cover, if you didn't need anything else to sell it to you, the creator of Sandman, Neil Gaiman, said, A candy-coloured and vicious delight and always dangerously funny. Nice. If Neil Gaiman is saying something's funny, it's fucking funny. <laughs> like, Neil Gaiman, as we all know, doesn't laugh. Yes, uh, the front cover, Mario, would you like to describe this front cover to me? Yeah, it's pretty much everything you said. Unicorns, dead, teddy bears, bits of stuff and ripped out. And pretty much, yeah, that's blood coming out of mushroom with a face on it. The, the behind blub is one of my favourites to ever blub. Once upon a time in Fairyland, there was a girl who hated the place and did messed up stuff like this. Pretty gross, right? She flew through the fucking moon, Mario. <laughs> 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 to be honest, I would love to tell you that I could uh, that I know everything about the story in this, but I really don't. <laughs> like, it, it's it's just madness. It is sheer fucking madness. Like, I'll tell you what, Mario. Right? Yes. I'm gonna go through parts of the book, right? Okay. This is probably the most unique review you will ever hear in your life. Okay. Because I don't know really what's going on, but I know I enjoyed it. Imagine a really, 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 really grim adventure time. Yes. That's what this book is. Really grim adventure time. I'm going to show you pictures, Mario, and then I want you to tell me in the microphone, to our lovely listeners, what you, what uh, the viewing imagery I'm showing you. Okay. You ready? Yes. Three, two, one. Let's do it. Image one. Yeah, that's uh, Slay the Tickle Troll and Eat the, uh, and Hunt the Heart. Oh, they are oddied with their hearts out. There's many of them. They're like 40. Six feet tall. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Goblins in a garbage. And they are all fucking dead. Bar one. Little fly with a gun. And those dragons. If you fancy a dragon. Oh, yeah, and the dragons are blown up. Indeed. Now, we'll skip to the happy end of this. The Queen of Fluffy, Fluffing Fairyland. Nice. Very nice. Very gory. Yes, the little girl in this by the end, spoilers, but you know, you're not reading this for the end, you are reading it for everything else. <laughs> the little girl is the queen of fluffing fairyland. She has fluffed everything, she has done everything in, and she is quite happy with that. This is sheer madness, this book. It's colourful and it's fun, and I just... See if you like Alice Madness Returns. Yeah. Me- American McGee's Alice, and you like yeah, Adventure yeah. Time and stuff like that. Imagine those spliced together in the most awkward way possible, and you have a sandwich called I Hate Fairyland, and you should pick it up and read it, because it's fucking hilarious. And the publisher of that is Image Comics. Yes, Image Image Comics. are always given... The last couple of years I've been more diving into Image than new Marvel or DC titles just because I want a little bit of different stuff from your usual superhero stuff and I'm going to say that Image has been blowing my socks off. Image are pretty good, man. Like th- They are definitely... They like to try new things. And Which, it, it pays off. It is because, you know, you need something fresh and if you want... You know, if you're sick of you, you know, the, your typical bedtime stories and stuff like that, I hate Fairyland. It's just, do you know, do you know what it's like? I've got it. The towering sandwich that is Adventure Time, American McGee's Alice, and Borderlands 2. Oh, okay. That is what this book could probably be compared to. If you like any of those things, give it a read, man, because it's fucking good. This, this bit at the bottom will tell you everything, and I'll read it to you, and I hope that you listen to this podcast before you go to bed, because I want to fuel your nightmares. I Hate Fairyland, a new comic from the New York Times best-selling Eisner Award winning cartoonist Scotty Young, who also done Wizard of Oz, Rocket Raccoon. Yes. That's a yes. winner. Yeah, he uh, wrote and uh, done art for it. Uh, fortunately and the Milk. Not read any of that. Um, it's a fairy tale like adventure that smashes its cute little face against hilariously violent comedy. That's definitely not a bedtime story for the kiddies. Unless your parents are super cool and don't screen your entertainment, then whatever. Yeah, cool. I'm down with that. Join Gert, a grown up in a s- a grown up in a six year old girl's body, <laughs> who has been stuck in the magical world of Fairyland for nearly thirty years. I think that would make you go absolutely mental. On a maddening quest to return home, it's just her, a fly named Larry. And a battle axe against slug lords, mushroom men, zombie f- fawns, barbarians, her nemesis, 
Queen Claudia and even more insanity. I think... Uh, that's pretty much sold me on it. I think you need to read it. Yes. Everybody needs to read it. It's a book that just deserves more credit. Give it a read, man. You'll love it. It's genius. Yep. James, uh, I haven't read this uh, graphic, but James, what would you review this? From when I read it, because I got it, uh, I think it was about a year ago, and I read it immediately after, and it stuck with me, and I kept meaning to read it again. But from what I can remember of it, the comedy in it, I'd probably give it a good 8 out of 10. Nice. It's the, uh, the it's Scott, good, Scotty Young's art is... Uh, Here's the thing, artists and writers, you can tell them in instantly. Artists that have a very iconic imagery for their stuff, I love it. Like yeah, well this, Scotty Young here is on ball, all I'm saying is. You, you look at it, you're 99% going, is that Scotty Young? Young well, this it? is the thing, the colours in it are kiddy. The actual drawings are kiddy, but then, you know, they become adult when, you know, you know, there's blood and there's guts and there's gore and there's holes in people's bodies and, you know, X, Y, Z. It's madness, this book. And like I say, the blub, you know, it's a 30-year-old and a 6-year-old yeah. body who's been there for 30 years and is about to have a fucking panic attack. This book is something unlike anything I'd ever read before. And, you know, from what I remember of it, it's great. But... That's all we've got time for today. Yes, unfortunately, that's all for today. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this. Let us know what your favourite comics of the month were. And you can listen to us on SoundCloud at Glasgow Gene Geeks. Uh, the podcast is also on iTunes at Glasgow Gene Geeks. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook at, you guessed it, Glasgow Gene Geeks. And rate, review and subscribe. Mario. Geek out!